Hi, welcome to Landmark Recognition. In this section, we're going to discuss implementing landmark recognition on the cloud, configuration of landmark recognition, and trying out landmark recognition. Implementing landmark recognition on the cloud. In this video, we're going to discuss working with Firebase Vision Cloud Landmark Detector, detecting the camera feed image, and displaying the results on the screen. Going back to Android Studio, the first thing we'll notice in our case switch statement here is that there is no code here for landmark recognition. The last one is image label detection. So, fortunately for us, the processor is actually included in the code. However, it's not included in the demo for some reason. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and add it. So after classification, we're going to say landmark recognition and we'll just type that in here okay and then we need to add it to the spinner as well so we'll do that here and then we need to add it to our case switch so we'll add it to the last one after the last one okay so we'll call that landmark recognition we'll say using landmark recognition detector processor or I guess recognition processor and then here we'll need to use the cloud landmark recognition processor okay so now that our UI is all set up let's go inside and take a deep dive inside cloud landmark recognition processor so as we see it extends vision processor base and the generic type this time is a list of Firebase Vision Cloud Landmark. Let's take a quick look here. We'll see all the obfuscated methods, obfuscated variables, but we'll see that there are five public methods here that we can use. So there's get entity ID, get landmark, which is a string, get bounding box, get confidence, and get locations. So locations, if we look here, is a list of Firebase Vision lat long, latitude and longitude, and it just gives you latitude and longitude. So this will give you the list of the possible latitude and longitudes of where this landmark is. The confidence is the probability that they are correct that this is the landmark that you're actually looking at. So if, for example, you're at the Eiffel Tower and you know maybe there's a cloudy day or something like that or there's fog and it can't really be sure it can say you know there's a 0 0.5 out of 1 so 50 percent confidence level that this is actually the Eiffel Tower based on the landmark detector the bounding box is just where the landmark was detected in the camera feed or the image the landmark is the string so it's the actual name of what was found so if you're looking at the Eiffel Tower this would be Eiffel Tower and then get entity ID this would just be the ID of the landmark that was found. Okay. Now that we're past that, we'll look at our Firebase Vision Cloud Landmark Detector. And we'll see that it's instantiated as expected here, getting an instance of Firebase Vision and then just invoking Get Vision Cloud Landmark Detector. We're passing in the options object here and we'll look at this in the next video. Now, as expected here, getting the camera feed is done just like it is with the other detectors or processors. We're invoking here detector.detectInImage, and we're passing in the Firebase Vision Image object. Finally, in on success, we're displaying the results in our graphic overlay. So here, as usual, we're, pa we're invoking graphic overlay.clear, and then we're just adding a log message of the size of the landmarks that was found. So this is just like, let's say it recognized three landmarks in the camera feed or in the image, it'll say camera landmark size three. And then what we do is we loop through the landmarks. And for each one, we get the Firebase Vision Cloud Landmark object. So let's just add some spacing here so it's nice and clear. So there's the clear, there's the log. And let's separate it like that. So we're getting the landmark and then we're saying we're adding a log message saying we found a landmark on the cloud and if we open up here we'll see that this is probably the two string not this one 
there should be a two string method somewhere because here it'll say we're printing the the two string of the object or we can just say dot get landmark and it'll print nicely it'll say cloud landmark eiffel tower or cloud landmark pyramids for example anyways moving on after that we go into our cloud landmark graphic so cloud landmark graphic is our graphic object that draws on the overlay and we want to go to the draw method and the first thing we do is we do some null checks so we have to check that our landmark is not null because it is we can't draw anything on it and the second checks we need to do is that it has a name and that it has a bounding box otherwise again there's nothing for us to display there could be some other useful information but these two are key so the next thing we do is we're going to create a rectf object so that we can draw the bounding box on the canvas and that's all done here with the left top right bottom and then we're going to draw the text again here we're invoking landmark dot get landmark which just gets us the name so what we're expecting is to have the camera feed and there'll be a box around let's say the eiffel tower and at the bottom of it it'll say eiffel tower and that's pretty much it now you might be asking why for landmark recognition there's only a cloud landmark recognition processor and not a a local or a client based landmark recognition processor and i haven't been given a clear answer but i think the reason is just because there are so many landmarks and it requires a lot of different angles and views and conditions in order to process them all properly so this one really requires the cloud and google's vast library of ML models in order to get it properly correct.